We have with us today Zach Bailey. He is an artist and also what else would you like to tell us about yourself? Because I know you do a lot of different things. So I know you're an artist, but what else do you do? Yeah, totally. <laughs> like artist, musician, part-time drag queen, general manager by day, um, oh, wow. bike lane advocate at night, um, friends. <laughs> <laughs> wow you do a lot more than i expected because like i knew you do drag and i know you do like visual arts but i didn't know what else you do and that's that's a lot for i don't know to fit into a week yeah yeah Each week. yeah totally it's uh i like planning uh busy that's i mean it keeps it keeps your mind healthy too to do that um i think so so you have two songs out right now do you plan on releasing more this year or are you uh just solid with those releases because i listened to both of them and i like the folk approach thank you um i have those two under my name zach bailey and then i'm working on the promo for another one under my alter ego tipsy uh, mm, uh, so okay. the video for that is taking a bit of time, but it's, uh, it's are you, fun. Are you continuing with the folk approach with your alter ego, or do you have like a different genre plan? Um, this this genre will be more country. It's more country uh, mm, comedy. Okay. Comedy. Okay. Country comedy. Yeah. Because I, I I don't think I've heard something like that. Um, I mean, it's not quite like Big Town Road. Like the video yeah. is very like comedic, in my opinion. Okay. But uh, gosh, it's like Weird Al meets uh, whatever other genre exists. Is your alter ego doing drag? Currently, in this this version, no, they're not. Okay. Um, but the alter ego is kind of something that I, Zach Bailey, wouldn't say myself but i still want to put out into the universe okay or like okay i mean that's that's a good way to look at it actually i myself like find myself struggling when i want to like do certain things so i've thought of the alter ego route myself <laughs> totally like yeah you put yourself out under whitmire so like yeah how how does that feel like if you ever like do you try to keep to one specific genre or Oh, I make multiple genres, but I'm just talking about I kind of want to make, like, a character of some sort, you know? Mm. Just so it's not me, per se, and, I don't know, do different styles of music. I'm just always trying to do genre bending, so. Definitely. Yeah, I always saw David Bowie, how he kind of did that. He created Ziggy Stardust, mm. uh, and that was just like, oh, okay, you don't always have to be yourself and create art. Well, that, that's the thing, like, for music videos, I love to make, like, in, an actual, like, visitation of an idea. Like, in one music video I did, I did kind of, like, a Quentin Tarantino-style video, because I love his movies. Uh -huh. And so, I think the more art you can put behind something, the better it is. And it kind of just, you know, puts your heart on your sleeve for people to see what you're thinking. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, if you can have a heightened version of yourself to tell an idea, then go for it. Exactly. Um, so you're originally from Kansas, and now you're living in California? Yeah, correct. I am in California now. How did that uh, journey happen? 
and what made you want to move and why do you like California now? Well, elementary school was fantastic with you, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so it sure wasn't that. Um, but I, I thought I always kind of wanted to come to California. And, mm. you know, I even went to, so I went to high school and college in, in Kansas, but uh, I, I got an internship at a company in San Francisco, which I was lucky enough to okay. stay with my aunt who lives there. And so okay. I was able to take that and then I kind of just was like, this is too tech and I made to move down to Los Angeles and... I, mean, I shared a bedroom. I lived with a guy. Bless his heart. If you're listening, Tom. <laughs> he uh, snored. I was so loud every night. So now I have to like wear earplugs to sleep. Um, oh wow! But it was very cheap rent, and that allowed me to like just find some gigs and like hustle on like the production side of live events. And so that's my day job. Okay. Do you feel like you're, like, finding yourself, or do you feel like you've, like, found yourself now? That's an interesting question. Like, I think... Well, just because you're making, like, a, a growth, probably, from, I don't know, even the last time I may have seen you in person, or even just since living in Kansas, I imagine being out there now for a time frame, uh, that you maybe experience, like, growing up a little bit faster, because you're living out of fast food lifestyle in California, if you think about it, everything's a lot more fast paced. It, there are things that are fast paced, and I, I think it's just because there's so many people who want a certain thing in this location. Mm -hmm. So, like, in Kansas, I had a hard time knowing people who wanted to, like, be in movies or, like, who wanted to put themselves, yeah. like, in music, but not to say that you can't attract that and you can't create that, like... Um, it's. I mean, it's really just all you who you can network to, and sometimes it's hard to network to those people if you can't even get into that like bubble in the first place, you know. Totally. So, like, have I found myself? I think I'm constantly recreating myself. Okay. Um, but I have found work that keeps me excited and challenged on a daily basis. Um, and a group of people that I surround myself that inspire me and challenge me all the time. Um, so I feel like, and I can pay my bills. <laughs> so I feel like, <laughs> that's always a good thing to pay your bills. Yeah. So I feel pretty good. Um, but I'm I mean, close to more. Okay. I was going to say, it's always good to have a good support system. I'm glad you have that out there. Cause I mean, I know you probably still have family out here, but you said you had your aunt out here or out in California. And so it's good that you found a group of people that you probably feel safe, comfortable and accepted by. And so that can help you. And even if you have an idea, you can just bounce it. You can like bounce it to them and see, you know, how it can progress. Absolutely. And people that want to incubate it and make it into mm. a thing. They're like we believe well, in your idea. You're like, that's just an idea, but it can happen. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, that's good that you can have that out there so that you can, like, progress as a human being and as an artist. Have you felt like you've been able to foster that in uh, where you're at? Mm, well, okay, so the music, scene's out, the music scene out here is, like, a little more kind of clicky-based. Mm. And so, like, that, I, I kind of just don't want to get involved with that. I've been through the, like, ringer with music out here, and then I just realized I like doing it on my own. Fair. <laughs> like I have people that help me with production and other things but like just writing the music and just like making it what I want it to be instead of trying to formulate what five people want into one compromise it's hard in a band it's so difficult and I think that's but true I have people everywhere. yeah I, I was gonna say but I have people I can like jam with out here which I'm like very fortunate for because like it's just a very creative or a creative space for all of us just to throw ideas there's no judgment we can play any genre you know that's great yeah i think if you can create that space and for yourself you can do it wherever you're at if you are putting that out there and actively seeking it like it's gonna find you too 
I agree with that. That's why that's why I like um I don't know if you've seen what I've made recently, but Spooky Kitten Records. It's like an entertainment network, but it's just a community of artists helping other artists. So it's it's just cool. And I like it because at first, yes, it was like a Kansas, Missouri idea, but then I have a bunch of musician friends that are all around the US. And so I was just like, it would be cool to just, you know, be able to connect this all out into different regions we would never be exposed to. Definitely. And like, so cool that you're taking that step to do something that can help support other people. And like, that's, I'm, I'm sure you've been able to get a bunch back in return as well by giving too. Well, I try to do it more like um, selfless. Cause I really just, I've been in the spot where nobody wanted to help me out, you know? Mm. And so it's just like, okay, being by myself, I got to learn production. I got to learn how to shoot a music video, like literally everything. And I was just like, man, it should not be this difficult, you know? Like, but it was also cause I'm, I'm very, I don't know. It's hard for me to trust people with like art because you're just like putting your idea on a lifeline basically and hoping that it doesn't get shitted on or anything like that. Yeah, it's emotionally uh, tough, tough work. Um, I read this really great book called The War on Arts, where okay. it was a past military general who decided he no longer wanted to be part of the war machine. And then he went on to become a writer. And he compares the two, war and creating art as this discipline that's both are incredibly difficult and emotionally draining and and i found it found I mean, very inspiring to see like okay yeah if you have the discipline at some of these things then you can you can absolutely make it happen but it's hard it is hard i mean you got to trust people I mean, whether it's even like putting your idea or just like, hey, can you help me out, you know, for any type of situation as an artist. I mean, back to the support system, like it's great that you have that. And it brings me into my next topic, which is mental health. Mm. You're cool to talk about it. Sure. Because I think as an artist and anything you see really right now, there's just a lot in the public headline of mental health and I think some people who don't really like value mental health or experience, you know, hardships, you know, it's hard to like be sympathetic to people, you know? Mm. And so like for me, like I understand all these situations happening in the public media, such as the Olympics, like if your mental health isn't there as a gymnast, you know, like how could you focus, which is the prime Thing you have to do in my opinion is be focused you know 100 and it's the same thing with like musicians like if they couldn't play the end of a tour or something like i heard on npr with claro if you know her mm -hmm. or she was explaining how like she almost couldn't finish some of her tours but she like pushed through just because she didn't want to disappoint fans but i'm just thinking like even being a fan of hers uh I would have rather her sit it out and be right in the head, you know? Right. It's like, I mean, it's tough when you have people counting on you because there's, yeah. a, there's a part of me that wants to please people and to be accountable. How do, how do you do that? And also gives myself space to rest. That's... I think it can be just trying to find your balance in life unfortunately we all have to work unless we can make our creative ideas monetize which i know we're all hoping for uh but other than that like i think if more people just like meditated valued their health like drinking water like i, I see you doing <laughs> if if you drink more water though like that's just one key essential thing that a lot of people don't do mm. and it can it can help with just like how your body functions totally i yeah and to that point like my basic health like i have read multiple books on diet and health and so i eat as clean as i possibly can and i find that that has really improved my uh ability to focus and then i'm also 
you know, like multiple yeah. times a week. And so I just have a set of procedures in place of like my diet, you can stray within this boundary, like <laughs> physical activity, like, okay, you're working out somewhat. And if you're stressed at work, then, you know, go take a break. Or, Sometimes just writing your thoughts down can be like an easy way to express yourself without really having to open up besides to yourself. I love that. Yeah, I journal every night. I, I should probably journal every night. I try to just at least jot down an idea a day though. Ooh. And that, that keeps me going. That's fun. Just like, even if it's, it can, it doesn't necessarily have to be something to even build upon. Like for me, I'm just like, what's, what's like a phrase I like? What's a lyric I could create? Mm. And then maybe someday I'll go back and just pull that one line and then use it to make a song. Right. Which I, I've done that before, but I think just as long as you're like entertaining your mind, like unfortunately, like I do watch a lot of TV, like the streaming apps, uh, and I'm trying to find ways to cut that out. So me and my girlfriend, we go out, go outside into nature and uh we'll just like sit out there and ground ourselves and literally i really like doing that but it's been very hot out here we had a heat wave so it's just like man we can't even go outside right now totally awesome. and i imagine in california it's probably i don't know if y'all had the heat wave but i know it definitely gets hot there from living there yeah before. it's been like 90s and a thousand not a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> the humidity. It's really freaking hot lately. Yeah. It looks nice out there today, though. <laughs> yeah, it is actually gorgeous out right now. The sun just set over these trees and have a cool breeze. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I entertained your mental health question, but I, I, I think it is very, very important and everyone approaches it differently. Um, and... I, I just try to be respectful about where everyone is at. So, you know, yeah. you can ask how someone is doing. And I don't know if I always get a good answer, but um, just just really listening and just caring. And, you know, if someone's not all there, they're not really space. That's, yeah, that's my I approach. Mean, everyone reacts different. That's a good way to approach it. I, I personally just, like, think how would I want to be treated and I try to get better at that and even though like sometimes like your emotions can play into how you react and it's not always the best thing if you have accountability for it that can definitely help you out in the long run I mean we're all human we're gonna make mistakes totally you know but if you don't blame yourself and look at why am I the issue, you know, like sometimes you'll just never grow from there. And that's where a lot of people stop is when they don't take accountability for themselves. Absolutely. And they look at everything else being someone else's fault or a situation not going their way that uh, they're still right, you know? Yeah, I've seen that so, so, so many times. And yeah, it's frustrating. As a friend, I'll help for so long. Nothing grows, then pull back because they still they'll figure it out at some point in their journey. Yeah, I just think like I'll give you an instance like people with like a drug use problem. Even like I understand that from like my own addiction with like weed, and <laughs> uh, I haven't really been a addicted to alcohol but that's because i got to see something play out in my life and mm. so like you can have things that like i'm glad like I, I really don't enjoy drinking or anything like that but it's because i had events happen in my life where i saw other people using it and knowing someone like myself i have a very addictive personality so i try to limit myself to things and that could be with like eating, playing video games. Uh, I wish I could get addicted to playing music all the time, but I think <laughs> just being told to like be quiet, like you know, because it's too late to play. Like it's just like embedded in my brain that I can only play at certain times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my brain is a little bit spacey today, actually. <laughs> No, you're fine. I, I literally just woke up from an hour nap when you texted. I'm like, oh my god, it's now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your time. Oh, for sure. Um, 
Just, uh, yeah, anything else? I got, a, I got a question for you. Yeah. Okay, um, one thing that we do on this show is we ask our guests, outside of your own songs, because I'm going to play both of them for them, uh, what is your favorite song right now by another artist? What is my favorite song right now by another artist? Um, so the music video for Lil Nas X. Mm, which uh, which song? Uh, gosh, I don't even know the song name. That's that's horrible. Uh, song is, is it the one with the jail? Industry baby, yeah, the <laughs> one with the jail, the gay man in jail. Oh, iconic. Okay, okay, that song came out on like Friday, like on a Friday, and like I randomly saw it, and I'm kind of a big Jack Harlow fan just because I like, I just kind of like his rap flows. Yeah. But uh, when I saw that song, I was like, ooh, that song was on repeat for 37 plays. Yeah, his. I just looped it. Loved having a token straight guy come in. It was just kind of funny to me. I was just like, all right, but it's just like. That that's art, you know. Everybody expresses art, and I'm glad that he, like, he kind of got shunned. Lil Nas X, they got shunned at first, trying to do country and rap, but then I'm glad like other artists were like, no, like, stop being this gateway, you know, type of person, and just let the person be, you know. Yeah, I think he's really has the whole world on his shoulders. Like, I just I respect him so much, and what he's doing and as a gay man like he's not only championing blackness he's talking about queer gayness at the same time and queerness and like there's a lot that he's taking on and it's ambitious and it's cute it's working i love his just rollouts in general they i don't know they're very interesting and you can't predict it like you're saying it's just he does have the world on his like heels just waiting for the next drop and i'm i love when an artist can get that start man definitely like they just what about you what's what are you listening to lately um well honestly like outside of that track uh i've kind of been stuck on the doja cat album and the tyler the creator album Mm. just because like i've been following tyler the creator for a while and it was cool to see him go back to like his like rap roots that he's first started with and it just shows his versatility that i mean he produces everything on his own and so just being able to do everything the music videos are always like on another level of being like in their own world he just makes like a world out of that um outside of that honestly like probably my top played song Tyler the Creator, yeah, I've really been fucking with Tyler Beaujolais. He's another one that creates characters, a bunch of characters. That's what I'm getting at. Like, he he's made like TV shows. He's written for movies like The Grinch. You know, he's just everywhere, and I'm I'm happy to see him have some growth because like I almost was worried that he was stuck and just like only going to be able to do rap, but he just like took a whole new genre and won a Grammy with it. Yeah, that was, that was great. But is there anything you would like to let the listeners know is coming up for you? Maybe like a show, a release, or do you want to keep that all in the wraps? I don't have anything set just yet, but uh, if I were to say anything, I would say do something that makes you happy. Okay, that's some good advice. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day, and thank you for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Michael. Thank you.